Hey, if you like to shop on Amazon like most everybody, you can help Southgate Media Group out by going to southgatemediagroup.com and look at the top, there's an Amazon link. You can click that, log into your account, and a portion of everything you buy will help support the podcast of Southgate Media. So, it's cheap, it's easy, and you're just doing the same thing that you would do anyways. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. And you're listening to Krypton Report. Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I am Tyler. With me, as always, James, the Man of Steel. I'm the Superman of yesterday because you know what? Tomorrow is crazy. I'm frustrated because guess what, James? All my Save Krypton Report episodes, everything that we've recorded over the history of our stuff is on my external hard drive that has crashed, that I can't get to work. So, hello, oh. <laughs> hello good listeners. But, we are back, um, and we are continuing our, our monthly special, because we're going to do this. We decided we're going to do it by a month because we have a special coming up of All-Star Superman. So for those who are like, wait a minute, where did that go? You guys were reading All-Star. What, what happened? We're back. We're going to cover some issues today. Starting with issue five, the gospel according to Lex Luthor. James, are you ready to take this dive? Yes. Yes, sir, I am. So let's just jump into it. Twisted I mean, mind of Lex Luthor. I mean, we got some news to go over, I guess. Um, uh, just quick, you know, we don't have to dive into anything too detrimental tr- here. But Black Adam started filming this week, so that movie actually is happening. Um, I've always had hope, but, you know, we'll, we'll see because they hadn't got it in front of camera in forever. Um. If you go, if you search for it, there's a great article from Variety with an interview with Chris Terrio about the process of of writing ba- Batman vs. Superman and Justice League. And then what happened to him and how he kept his mouth shut when they released the theatrical Justice League. It's very eye-opening because I don't know if a lot of people know that there was a Batman vs. Superman script. And it was called Batman vs. Superman. And... It was written by David Goyer, and that was like the first script that was going to be used for the film. And when Affleck signed on, he asked Terrio to come over to work the script. So so Terrio, you know, didn't completely start from scratch when writing BVS. And it's just, it's really interesting because I don't, you know, I don't think people realize that. And... You know, it's a it's a really great read how Terry talks about it. he didn't come up with the title. That was like a studio thing or something. Um and just that whole process of getting them written and then uh why he signed on to Justice League. And it was it was it was a good read or so and then I guess the biggest news is we got the first trailer for the long Halloween part one and is the trailer looks awesome. What do you think? Yeah, it does. Um, it's in the same, uh, it's in the same animation style as, uh, the man of tomorrow and, uh, the new, um, justice society, world war two, I think, um, I think that's, so, that's the biggest thing worth pointing out, I think, to me, like, is the fact that it has that same animation style. Because it just kind of reminds me of, like, are they building a new connective world that we don't know about yet with this, anim- with this animation style? Um, uh, we don't know. And I mean, that would be pretty awesome. Yes, it would. Um, 
Yeah, it, it would. It, it worked really well for them before. Um, uh, over the last, oh, geez, how many years since Justice League War came out? 2014 or 13? 12? No. 13? It, War came out 14. <laughs> I think, 13 or 14? I think 14, because I think Flashpoint came out in 13. Without pulling out my phone to look at. Because it was after... That sounds, that sounds about right, though. Because it was after Man of Steel. And that's one thing I remember very clearly, because uh, I was living in North Carolina when it came out. And I'm pretty sure it came out in 14. Uh, uh, it worked really well for them um, for that, and and you know it. I don't know. It just it it benefits to to have a connective universe, um, solo films and team up films. I mean, it benefits for these uh, for these IPs for for Marvel for DC. Um, so uh, with with the similar animation style, I mean. Heck, who knows? You know, maybe I think we've discussed this or at least heard that maybe uh, Barry coming back into World War II through time travel is him him emerging from resetting time after the end of um, Dark Side War. Yep. You know, I mean, I mean it's it would, possible it could be a, a, a new continuity changed because of that. And it's also, I mean, it makes me think a little bit, just jumping back, is the way they got around the animation of trying to do Jim Lee animation for Hush was because they put it in continuity. So, you know, and, and with this, they can, yeah. it, like, um, they can get around it because... Yeah, uh, Tim Sale's art. Yeah. So it's like, hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah that, that would look, that would, that would look a little... Um, it probably would look a little rough in animation, you know, mm -hmm. trying to trying to match that style, you know, kind of the same way Frank Miller's would look rough in animation, you know, they had to complete it and and you know make it softer and work better for animation for The Dark Knight Returns. Yep. So. Um. Yeah. So I mean, anyway. But uh, I I enjoyed them. I enjoyed them adapting stories in the past to be in continuity. So if they were to do, say, the Long Halloween, and it's you know two two three years into Batman's career, you know, like, and and there's room to tell lots of stories with all these characters. I mean, we don't know yet if it's a connected continuity. The only thing we have, because we've only seen one movie. We haven't even seen the second one yet. The next one's not due out digitally till the end of the month, uh, maybe sometime next week. And then and then a couple weeks later, out on Blu-ray. Yep. So sure. we don't even know yet. Uh, um, we're just speculating. But the animation style is the same. And uh, I am excited to see Jensen Ackles back uh in the dc universe playing batman this time yeah it's it's interesting so um it looks good i mean there's not a lot in the trailer to act the actual story except for holidays you know so we just see things and it says um the long halloween part one which means that yes i will buy it Yes, I will buy part two, and then James will turn around and buy the whole collection. Uh, as cause you Probably. Because you know they're going to release it as a... Uh, uh, a deluxe edition kind of a thing, um, like they did for The Dark Knight Returns part one and two. Um, thanks to you buying me that special edition hardcover... Dark Knight Returns uh, book that came with the Blu-ray. So uh, I got that. I'm very appreciative of that. And uh, I bought the Death and Return of Superman, uh, which is the Death and Reign of Superman. Yep. Sir. 
which that one is actually kind of cool because there's a different way they cut it in the middle mm -hmm. for the story to transition into a new movie. It's not just fade to black and then the new movie starts. They actually did some editing in the in the middle there to kind of give you a little bit more of a smoother transition into the movie. Which I like a lot because you don't actually really notice it. So. But, all right, we will get into the all-star story now. Right. Are we ready? Are we ready? I'm ready. So the gospel according to Lex Luthor. So this one starts where Lex Luthor is on trial. And basically, it's very interesting because it starts with Luther on trial, and he basically gets sentenced guilty on all counts against crimes against humanity. The sentence is death in the electric chair. And he's taken to Stryker's Island, and Clark Kent is going to interview him. And we get this, you know, that like we talked about last time, like the bumbly Clark. And we see Lex working in his cell, building something. And it's fun because, uh, you know, we, we have Lex sitting there. Clark notices that his tool is about to basically electrocute him. And Clark does this funny, trips over it, knocks it away. And Lex Luthor points out, your clumsiness may have saved me from electrocution. So it's 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 kind of interesting. Um, and you know, this is just this is uh, Lex and his pure, I think, arrogance of just how you know he's in jail. He's about to, you know, he's gonna die. Like Lex is, you know, up to die, but he doesn't seem upset with anything. Um, yeah, um, I mean, as we find out in this story, he's he's there of his, his own his own uh, choice to be there. Um, the uh, the experiments he does, the things he's created. I mean, he he's tunneled. He's already, he already has a tunnel. He can escape out of here. Um, I mean, he does what he wants. He's he's got exercise equipment and. Um, you know, he, he can basically almost come and go if, if he wanted to. Um, he, he kind of feels like he's doing some good in the prison, um, creating creating civilization inside of the prison, just to show he can just to show he can kind of a thing. Yep. And you know, when he, he's sitting there working out, doing all this stuff, um, you know, he's talking to Kent. And he's like, feel that, feel that, Kent, real muscle, not like his. It's easy to be strong when you just happen to have come from Planet Krypton. This takes hard work. And, you know, Clark's like, impressive, but off topic. Um, you know, and then Lex makes the comment, so how Superman these days? And then, like you said, he's walking around prison. He's showing that. He's put everything in made society. And then he mentions the parasite. Yeah. And that is where we have our problem is the parasite. Because the parasite does what, James? Uh, absorbs power. And, and uh, Right now, at this point in time, Clark is overloaded with power. He, he's not to the point where he's deteriorating um, and getting weaker. He's still flooded with power. So, uh, that uh, Parasite can actually just absorb it being near him. He doesn't even have to come into contact with him. And that's what causes the prison, like, riot, outbreak, gas, 
everything possible that goes crazy. And even Luthor is still trying to say, you know, it's my world, I can do this. You know, Clark basically takes the tear gas, someone tries to shoot Lex, he uses heat vision on the pipes, uses his freeze breath, you know, and then Lex kind of fights the parasite. And then like this is where you say like they make their way to Lex's special tunnel. And we meet Leopold. And Leopold is Lex's monkey. Jim. That's dressed in a Superman suit. <laughs> dressed in a Superman costume. <laughs> and he's going He would have a monkey dressed like Superman. Mm. And you know, he takes Clark down to a very almost river sticks looking. That's the kind of imagery and feel that I got from this. Um and Lex says can't now he's died. You know, because Lex is smug. He, he's happy that, um, you know, that he's uh, he's basically killed Superman. And he, it's like, it's yeah. like he's going to his grave happy because he's done what no one else could. And it's like, if I got to go, yeah. he's going down with me. And that, I mean, that's issue eight. I mean, it was cool. That I like well, Lex, it. Lex is never going to think straight, so. Uh, you know. Issue five. Yeah, I mean, I liked it just because I like seeing Lex as the pure, arrogant person that he is. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's he's really smug in this. I mean, this, this is textbook Lex. Um like incredibly smug he's there because he wants to be um you know he he's supposed to be getting interviewed but he seems like he's uh like he wants to ask ask the questions he he wants a specific story told and he's trying to feed feed clark that story mm -hmm. lucky for us clark's a good journalist and you know he's trying to get another story Yes, he is. So we go to episode six or issue six funeral and small. Now, I like the cover art with Clark and Crypto. Yeah. And then we get shots of the farm and, you know. Jonathan out there talking with Clark. That's a young Clark in Crypto. And it's it's kind of nice seeing them. You know, we're big fans of Crypto in this house. And I like how he plays fit. He just rips up the creature. And throws it. <laughs> right. Throws it into outer space. And then uh, a person shows up and says he's there to help for the harvest. And we come back, and um, Jonathan's like, hey, I got new farm hands, Clark. I'd like for you to meet them. Uh, and it is a little weird because the guy's like, Clark, my name is Calvin Elder. Uh, first, yeah. Yeah, I'd be like, hmm, okay. I mean, I'd be suspicious. And then a dude wrapped in bandages and a little midget. I mean, I know this is like pre Superman Clark, but <laughs> I mean, for the most part, yeah, pre Superman Clark, um, because because he he does have a suit and he's flying around, um, were they talking to young Clark about the time travel, about the Legion? Yeah. Or were they talking to the older Clark? The young, Can't remember now. The young Clark, I believe. I like the scene we have here in the diner. Good old Pete Rose. And Lon. You know, that, that best friend of Clark's who's supposed to know his secret, you know? Pretty, yeah. You know, who, 
we should know every time and everywhere. Right. Um, I do like that scene. Uh, Clark takes off. Uh, Clark takes off and he's acting um, ill. <laughs> she knows and Pete knows that she knows, but like they de- they're not telling Clark yet. Like, it's like she's she's waiting for Clark to tell her because she's his friend. But Clark, you know, he's he's not there yet. But he should. But come on, Clark. But I mean, I get it. Uh, and we have Clark just chilling, and we see the farm hands, and all of a sudden. My real name is Cal Kent. I'm the Superman of 85,250. So all I'm thinking is they didn't get really inventive in those thousands of years with names. His name is just Cal Kent. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's... Not even like Cal Kent the it's, third. It's, or a, the it's a... You know, like... Right. You know, say it's, it's a... Um, it's just a, a family name, you know. It's got a. I mean, it's got a hell of a legacy. Maybe he's like the uh, eight hundred and fifty thousand years in the f- future. Maybe he's like the fan, you know, how everyone was named Kit Walker, and you know they really didn't put the number as much in their name. They were just Kit Walker, but only they knew the number. Everyone's like, "What uh-huh. are you talking about, Tyler?" The Phantom, the old comic strip, also a film with Billy Zane. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a guy in the jungle who rides a horse with a purple suit on. Okay? Go watch it. <laughs> yes, sir. Slam evil. Enjoy. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and then we find out the other one is the unknown Superman of 4,500 AD. The Superman of the fifth dimension, which just... All right, that's just Grant Morrison in love with... Them. Mention, uh, they're, they're after something called the Chronovore, and they're off to fight it. And then you see the Superman of Unknown stand back, Clark. This is the job for the Superman Squad. Uh, Clark it says, "I can take care of myself." Deep Vision's cow flies off, and. Uh, you know, so all this stuff's going on. Clark's actually causing more problems. But then we see uh, Jonathan Kent out at the farm. farm. Uh, and I, this is really cool because it kind of comes out of nowhere. Uh, and and he's talking to the, super, the unknown Superman. And he says... Uh, he says to him, like, this is the end of the line for me in the farm. And he says, he'll be okay, won't the boy? And he says, it all comes out right in the end. And you're like, okay, all right. But it's not exactly the unknown Superman, but it looks like it because it's another person in bandages. Um, and so while they're fighting the chronovore, you see Cal say, Jonathan Kent has suffered a heart attack. And then you see Ma go running to Jonathan. He's by a scarecrow. And then we see young Clark scream, Pa, not my Pa, I can save him. And then we're at the funeral. And it's it's really interesting um, because we have Clark, you know, up there talking. And then we have the other Superman in the back. We have, you know, a guy who looks like he should be in the Doom Patrol sitting there. And I I do like some of the lines, you know, that Clark says. He says, he taught me that the measure of a man lies not in what he says, but what he does. I agree with that. He taught me that a good heart is worth more than all the money in the bank. That. He showed me by example how to be tough and how to be kind and how to dream of a better world. Yeah. 
and uh, you know we have parks in there on the porch. Uh, you know, and Clark's he's uh you know he says I can't leave you alone, Ma. And she says, "You think your pa would want you to stay on the farm?" And he says, "You know, what's the point of all the powers? What's the point of anything if I if I didn't even get to say goodbye?" Uh, and then we see that the big reveal is the Superman in bandages is actually Clark himself. He traveled back in time to be there. Yeah. When I first read this issue, the first time I read this issue, and then since it has been a long time since I've read it, um, at first I was like, wait, I said, I, I know that one's uh, Clark. And then when I read through it, I was like, oh, that's that's right. I was like, that's that's Clark now, the Clark that we're, that we're reading you know that he gets to that he gets to do that he gets to go spend those three minutes with his father um before the end when he didn't get to before mm -hmm. he, he had a chance to say goodbye and, and that was finally you know, that was pretty cool um and then in walks three more super people um and i mean that's that's a that's a fantastic thing you know since since jonathan kent being um dying uh is is such a big thing in superman lore i wish, um, I, I honestly you know, wish in, that in this Lots wasn't framed the way it is like with the with the multiple superman from the different eras if it had just been one person like one guy you know like disguised or whatever and it was actually clark you know what i'm saying like i just i don't know i, I think i would have liked it better but i'm not trying to be too much of a of a pain in the butt here, but because I, I like this um, idea a lot, you know, I, I like the idea a lot of the idea that Clark wasn't there to say goodbye to his dad, you know, because usually they always show he's right next to Jonathan. He dies. Um, yeah. Well, then, you know, when, when, when he has a heart attack, um, I mean, whether he's, uh, when he has heart attack, it's just, it's just, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. I was just going to say, like, it, to me, it's, it's usually he's depicted as being right there with his dad when he has a heart attack. Um, and, uh, it's always interesting. No, I mean, like, he always shows up. I mean, like, he's running down the, the driveway when he has the heart attack the first time in Superman 78. And then mm -hmm. um, in, in Smallville, you know, he's having the heart attack when he emerges from the barn. And they run up to him having the heart attack. So, yeah, he's he's there when, he's, when he dies. And in this one, he's busy doing something. Oh, I remember what my train of thought was. Um, the... the abruptness of a heart attack um donner or this or uh superman and lois um or even you know man of seal the way it's story of how he died at service the or the rest of the story of, of the movie um but the abruptness of when somebody dies like that whether it's a heart attack or a tornado um you never get that closure so um at, at least you know you you grieve and you move on but sometimes you know people don't get to say goodbye and stuff like that so yeah it's a really nice nice thing to have put to have made in this issue being one of the one of the last things he's able to do uh in his life so um i i, I do like it's just um I wish I just. Uh, that's all I'm saying before somebody tries to like yell at. It. Right. Do, like, <laughs> so, yeah. So we get the we get the three supermen you were talking about, or the three three other Kryptonians who emerge, and uh, <laughs> which of my descendants are you? 
that's actually really funny because it's him. He doesn't know that and he doesn't reveal that. It it, it is interesting. It's like it's that Grant Morrison writing where you're just like, This is so over my head right now. I think I understand what's going on. Right. You're like you're just kinda like looking at yourself like, Yeah, I get it. You don't yeah. know that you don't get it. But you're like Like, well, it's kind of crazy that that young Clark in this story, whose paw just died, and Clark, who is the unknown Superman, who got to say goodbye to his dad, are the same person. And then you got Super Prime here, this gold Superman, um, who is the same person, the same Clark, but from from the far future. Um, isn't he from DC 1 million or something? I haven't I, read that. I think so, but then it just kind of baffles my mind at the same time because the whole point of this is that Superman is dying in All-Star Superman. But, so it's just kind of like, all right, but aren't we experiencing his death? But now he's not. Well, dying. at this... Right. Well, at this moment, this is, you know, I'm speaking from external knowledge on that. At this moment, he doesn't know that that's him. And they don't reveal that that's him or anything. So, you know, as this story is being told, this is his, these are his final days. Um, it's, it's not revealed in this story or um, in All-Star Superman until later on that the Golden Superman is the same Superman from All Star Superman, the one who, who entered the sun. <sighs> heavy man. Heavy. <laughs> right. well, yeah, it's always heavy when you talk Grant Morrison, especially if you go like like I I got away from the book we're talking about. I I, I started talking about more of like I said that external knowledge of of stories beyond this. I I remember I just uh trying to explain it one time uh, to my, to Jania, like about how like Grant, I heard Grant Morrison explain uh, fifth dimensional stuff um, and I'm like yep that's how the man thinks at all times so, <laughs> right. like, just, just listen to him talk and you're like wow either like you're really really smart or you're t- but um <laughs> But I, I, like, I, I like this one. I mean, I can't really complain. I like it was interesting because, um, you know, it's once again, uh, we are in, uh, what do you call that? A, a Elseworlds Tales that we forget that we're in at Elseworlds Tales. Right. You know, so it's like, oh, Jonathan yeah, this- is alive and now he's dead. Okay. All right. <laughs> right. Um, you know, this, they say, this is a good issue. Um, a lot of reasons it's a good issue. And I think it, I think it, it it's really good and it stands out because you don't, so you don't even realize until the final, uh, the final, the, the, almost the final page, the second to last page, um, that, this Superman, because the story, it starts in the past and it exists in the past. Um, so you're like, why does this story jump to the past? Well, you find out that it, it may be what's happening is taking a place in the past, but it's taking place presently for the Superman that we are continuing to follow for the rest of this, uh, since the start of All-Star. Yep. So, so, which is really cool that you get that reveal in the second to last page because it could throw you off. And, and it kind of does. Like, it's, it's jarring at first because you're like, wait, huh? Um, because, like, the it's like, um, what do you call it? It's almost like anthological in the sense of, like, each chapter is the next chapter, but, like, it connects, but it's not like, it's not like when you're kind of reading the monthly books where, you know, you read the book and then the next month's issue you pick up and you're like, okay, this is continuing. Like, it's like it's continuing, but there's gaps in time. So, moving. Yeah, it's not, uh, 
it's not Man of Steel into BVS. It takes place on Black Zero and 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 BVS into Justice League, where you pick up on the death of Superman. <laughs> like total overlap. Mm-hmm. So now we're in episode seven, being Bizarro, and I'm just flat out say it. I, I hate reading Bizarro. Like, I'm when it comes to Bizarro, I just like Bizarro being the failed clone. Like, I don't need Bizarro world. I don't need so like these next two chapters. I'm just like, you can count me out. Like, I I don't I don't get really heavily into Bizarro. I like the idea of Bizarro just being this messed up clone failed experiment type Superman because um, then you can do some good stories where he's like kind of good you know but or bad yeah um, well like the uh, forever evil when Bizarro came out in the new 52 he was B0 mm-hmm. and that's how, how they came up with Bizarro and he was he was a failed clone and the stories involving him especially in forever evil was really good too and, and and that works for me, you know? Like, I just don't like the bizarre we're about to get. Right. And I heard, what was it, the, um, my, was it the Rebirth Red Hood and the Outlaws, where it was yeah. uh, Red Hood and Bizarro and Artemis? I heard that was very good, and I haven't, I haven't gotten to read it yet. At least the, at least the first, you know, I'm not sure, but number of issues, a, a good decent number of issues I heard. The story was really good for a while, so, or the book was really good for a while. Um, so all that to just kind of preface this next chapter, you can kind of take the lead on because you know the best part for me is just seeing Superman with crypto. I mean, not crypto, jeez, Superman fighting. Uh, you know, just the artwork of, kind yeah. of in space. But other than that. So, oh yeah, and go, James. <laughs> and go. Um, so, well, I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat as you, uh, pain in the butt to read Bizarro, um, which is worst in the next issue. So, um, thankful there, it is. It is a lot worse in the next issue. Um, but in this issue, uh, the um. Dr. Quintum, mm-hmm. they, their project and their um, uh, sensors, uh, they're, they're trying to monitor the Underverse and explore the Underverse. Um, and some form, some life form, kind of like a square planet, basically, um, emerges from the Underverse. Uh, and it's we know that you know the square Earth is is Bizarro world. We've seen we've seen that in in comics and things. Um, and Superman is out past Jupiter, releasing his Sun Eater, as he's getting too big for the zoo at the fortress. And uh, on his way back past Mars, uh, he gets attacked by these putties. <laughs> like the uh, Mighty Force Power Rangers buddies, yeah. And he gets attacked by them. And uh, the one that is out front that gets him uh, on the next page transforms. It's it's kind of him, but uh, off colors and stuff. Um, and then we have what seem to be like small meteorites, shooting stars kind of crashing to Earth. And it's all of these um, bizarro, these putties. And uh, uh, the planet, they're having a, the Daily Planet, they're having a, a celebration. Uh, 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 there's Perry up there, Lombard, Jimmy. Um, who's this woman? What they call her? What they say her name was? Amanda? I think I'm that's what they said her name was. I'm still just happy. <laughs> well, one emerges from the... Jimmy sees what's going on outside. Um, he's trying to get everybody's attention. Everybody's partying, so they're not they're not paying attention. And one of these one of these 
Bizarro's exit the elevator and attack. Uh, her name is Allie. Her name is Allie. I was close. Um, but she she touches her, and it mimics her. She becomes a Bizarro version of herself, and it kind of like destabilizes Allie or something. Like she becomes or or it infects her, yeah. and she becomes a Bizarro. Um, <laughs> Lombard throws her out the window. Yeah, Lombard but. is uh, he's awesome. Like, I really hate that. Like, he was in Man of Steel, and then like not in BVS, or like he hasn't been in like anything else. You know, like we've had like he wasn't in Lois and Clark. He wasn't in. Uh, he's not on Superman Lois. You know, there wasn't even some sort of Lombard type tease in Smallville. You know, and it's just like. Man. Yeah. Like no, the only other the only Lombard we've ever gotten really is animation besides the Man of Steel. He's in Superman Unbound. Mm-hmm. He's in uh The Death of Superman. Yeah. But yeah, that's about all we get. But he pushes her out the window before she infects somebody else. And he's immune to it. Um he didn't become infected. He didn't get changed into a bizarro. Um but the Bizarros are trash in the party. They're trashing a lot of the Earth, and there's Bizarro. Superman crashes to Earth. Yep. And um, then, I mean, I do like this part here where the boy's stuck, and Superman picks up and says, relax, man, he's safe with me. Like, that's straight up uh, Superman. So that, that, to me, is awesome. He gets hit, and then he uses, he says to Bizarro, try out one of my new powers. And I feel like really just like this is one of those stories that I will just look at. Um, I don't need to read the dialogue. I just watch. The I don't, you I, really I, can. Yeah. Cause I don't understand the dialogue. I have to use way too much brain powder. Oh, especially come the next issue. It's funny how Jimmy's watch is very versatile. He's able to hack into the, um, the blimp. Um, uh, the blimp network so he could um, impress impress a girl by riding on the blimp or flying her out of there <laughs> wherever about, they may be. Everything's about impressing a girl. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is why they talk about like why men when they get married that they slow down and don't do as much stuff. We spend our entire life prepping <laughs> to impress a girl. Like everything's all about, you know, getting the girl to notice you, blah, 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 you know, and then all of a sudden it's like, uh, okay, I got it. Now what? Right. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to get to that point where everything's comfortable and, and you're taking each other for granted, but, uh, you know, being mindful of that type of stuff, you know, trying to um, show each other that you always care, you know, mm. oh, that's yeah. what it becomes about. Yeah, it's just it's just kind of <laughs> joke about because you because I mean, think about it, it so much is like, yeah, I'm working out all the time. So this girl like or, you know, I want to impress her. I've done this. And then it's like your whole this mindset. This is helpful advice. Yeah, your whole mindset is built around the idea of impressing and attracting women and then all of a sudden you acquire your lady and you're like okay you know it's just like all okay. right um what, what, what do i do now guys <laughs> you know like uh, you're in uncharted territory yeah i don't know <laughs> so it 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 good advice from james tyler here at the Krypton Report. Life lessons from the Krypton Report. You're uh, what, what's going on? Just be like, hey, God knows what's up. Absolutely. Um, Superman lays into Bizarro. Like, I think he decks him and sends him all the way into outer space. Yeah, he does. <laughs> like, his jaw is all wide open, like, like his jaw just got separated. His tooth is flying through space. Like, yeah, Superman laid into him real good. 
and I'm, I'm kind of sad for Bizarro in some ways. I'm like, um, I'm like, hey, poor guy. But you know, at the same time, I'm also like, eh, sorry. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Superman. They everybody at the planet escapes in the, the blimp, and Superman takes the blimp to, um. I'm not sure where, but, you know, somewhere, somewhere up high, somewhere cold, um, which Lois is standing out in a dress that barely covers. Of course she uh, is. Slid all the way up to the, yeah, slid all the way up to the hip. And <laughs> I mean, how else is Superman? He's like, look, hey, guys, I'll, I'll save the day, okay? But um, Lois, yeah, um, you got it. <laughs> right. Uh, they say Lombard is immune and he x ray visions him and uh, he sees that his uh, quote unquote performance pills in his bloodstream um, are what has made him immune. He doesn't know if he would recommend those to everybody, though. Uh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would not. I'd be like, you know what, Lombard, you just okay. You uh, you okay? All right, buddy. Um, but yeah, cool. Superman leaves him in this cold place, and he flies off and heads to the square planet. And um, Superman lands on the head, the square planet with Bizarro. And they meet Zimbaro. 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 So that's seven, which is readable. Now, episode eight, us do opposite. I'm going to sum this one up, okay? Uh, basically, what I get is there's a Bizarro clone that is a reject Bizarro, which well, is. Well, did we? Did, did you say anything about how he hit the planet yeah like he, he, flew he, he flies off to, yeah he flew off to the planet he hits the planet so hard that like he hurts the planet which is like the single organism responsible for all the bizarros and the planet receive re starts to retreat back into the underverse oh okay somehow i didn't get that maybe because i'm just was really having trouble following the story like Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Because, I mean, I get he went to the planet. Uh, my bad. My bad, guys. No, um, that's, that, that's what happened. That's what the, uh, that's what the page is here where he flies into, he flies to the planet so fast. And then you see the mountain in the distance. And then he hits the mountain and causes this, this great big explosion. And, like, all the bizarros collapse and and then like the planet is gone and he's on the planet um and he says it's burrowing your world's burrowing into the cosmic sink beneath our universe that's why everyone should just have their life <laughs> everybody needs you okay everybody out there uh so, but uh, yeah, Zibaro. You were talking about Zibaro. Yes, not not to be confused with Sabaro, the pizza place. Um, <laughs> but basically, what I get from this is Zibaro is basically a Bizarro clone that basically is normal. So he's basically living the life of being in hell. Of uh, being the only person who has some sort of intelligence in a world full of bizarros. Yeah, because all all of Bizarro, they still they speak backwards. You know, die am good, and uh, no no down sinkhole go to under place. No into cold us go. No freezing good dark go. Like <laughs> it makes your head hurt when you try and. Because everything's the opposite. Yes. Because my head hurts sitting here talking to you, trying to talk about it. Um, and then Zabaro, he talks normally. So, like, 
but but to him, the the one in every five billion copies that's flawed, to him that's normal. But he can't communicate with everybody backwards. Mm-hmm. So like we said, his life world, and you know, it, it's in the artwork too because it looks like you really look at the artwork of him when he first shows up. He doesn't look as bad. But then as the story goes, like, he looks like he's decomposing more. Or it could just be the way it's drawn. Um, you know, just the art style. Because um, it does look like he starts to kind of fall apart and lose it. Meanwhile, Superman's starting to lose his powers. Zabaro's talking about there's only room on the rocket for one. And... Like, all the Bizarros want... To borrow to leave, but they put Superman on the rocket. It's yeah, <laughs> there's a Bizarro Jarrell. He has a plan. He has he has plans for a rocket. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. <laughs> well, they call him Le Roge Jarrell backwards. Yeah, I mean. Um, you know, uh, I just, I just don't like this. I'm beyond, like, people probably be all mad at me about it, but I just, I just don't like it. Bizarro and especially Bizarro World is not for everybody. Um, it's, it's tough to read. Um. I've read this before, so I knew the basis of the story. So when it was all this bizarro talk, I just really skimmed through it. And I read what Clark was saying. I only read Superman for the most part. Um, I read the page with the uh, bizarro Justice League. And Green Lantern's got a got a nose ring. <laughs> that's, his, that's his ring. And, and uh, uh, the Flash is super slow. And... His top speed is two inches per hour. Yeah. Even the turtles like, hurry up, let's go. <laughs> um, and then I did read the last page with Dr. Quentin and Lois. But they're like, and he says, the bizarre earth has gone beyond our range of instruments down into the underverse through the cold layers. Superman saved us all, but he's gone. I'm sorry, Miss Lane. I know you were close. And that's the end of episode eight. But um, I look forward well, to the next a, one. <laughs> <laughs> before, before we end, there's a uh, uh, Dr. Quintum and Lois scene in the middle um, where he's discussing the Underverse and the planet going back and Superman being on there. Um, and in it, at the end of the this two-page um, bit of story here... Uh, he said, but during a fine scan of our solar probe data, we found uh, something else disturbing. What do you mean? Right there, hiding in the sun. Wherever he is, I hope he finds a way back. I'd say this looks like a job for Superman. So this this here in the middle of the sun, something that their their sensors picked up, um, is is seeding for what happens later mm -hmm. uh, in, in the series. Um which we don't get too much of because, like you said, it's very um, it's very much like an anthology. Um, all all twelve stories. There's there's an overarching uh, through line, but each story sometimes is just its own thing. Um, each one is very much its own story. Uh, it's honestly the these two issues with the overlap of Bizarro World is kind of like the first time Superman is in the same place in two issues. Yeah. So like this, this right here, it is different. Um, but yeah, it does give us uh, seeds for something later on closer to the end. But that is where we leave. And I'm okay. Good. 
Yeah. We are good. It will be better to go to the the next the the following issues. And I just um, I haven't read this one yet because I didn't want to read too far ahead. I wanted to read enough. But man, when I was reading this section, I was just like, oh, maybe we messed up. <laughs> well, you know, the first two issues this episode, um, uh, issues five and six, uh, I I really like them. Um, you know, five, obviously a good issue, kind of why they, part of why they put that story into the animated movie when we go talk about that. Um, and issue six being having having so much heart even though, you know, dealing with the time travel and stuff like that. Um, it's a very, very touching issue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's definitely the next two issues where we get that lull. And it sucks so. because, you know, you know, everyone talked about this being such a great landmark Superman story. And to me, there's things in it that I like, but overall I'm not that in love with it. Um, it's one that I read and I was like, okay, you know, and then years later I was like, man, I haven't read that in a while. And I hear people, you know, just kept talking. I was like, and I just bought it and I was like, okay, let's buy it. It's supposed to be such a great Superman story. It'll be in my collection. I'll have it. And I like the, I mean, I love the artwork and I, I respect Grant Morrison for what he does and what he's writing and everything. Um, but there's parts to it that I like, but all in all, like there just there hasn't been anything in there that's really I felt like grabbed me and I've been like, yes, this right. is this is what I'm connecting with. Oh. You know, so far in this run, I think up to this point, you know, we've had more hits hits than misses. I mean, we got six issues out of uh, you know, we got six issues here, five issues depending on how you feel about. Um, issue four with Jimmy and, and becoming Doomsday, um, in my opinion. But I think issue, uh, you know, so you got five or six hits out of eight issues, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're not wrong. But what do you think, good listeners? Why don't you hit us back on our social media at Krypton Report uh, on Twitter, Facebook, you can find us or send us an email at kryptonreport at gmail.com. Let us know what your thoughts are on All-Star Superman, uh, what we've talked about so far. And just remember, I'm Tyler, and this is James. James is awesome, and everyone needs a James. Good night, everybody. I am Connor from the House of L. And I am Ray from the House of Zod. We are two of the many, many survivors of Krypton's destruction, and we have made our home in Australia, and dare I say have become Australians, for better or worse. But we have also decided to read Superman comics, uh, read Superman books, watch Superman shows, cartoons, movies, basically everything Superman, and from an Australian perspective as well. Whether you're a seasoned fan, like me, or whether you are coming in fresh, wide-eyed, and wanting to learn more like me, and this podcast is for you. Join us for our bi-weekly adventures available on all good podcast catches. So just search for Last Sons of Krypton, a Superman podcast. We'll be coming to you from Australia or some cosmic dimension, wherever we are that week. Up, 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 up and, and away. away. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Look in the sky.